Here's what's happening right now. A busy night for Columbia police. Over the past few hours, police and emergency crews have been called to several different locations. Thanks for staying up late with us. I'm Jim Reek. And I'm Brittany Peeper. Right around 8.30, there were reports of a shooting near Worley Street in Columbia. Then shortly after, the emergency room at University Hospital was put on lockdown. Now, we don't know if these two situations are related. Also, there is a separate death investigation underway at a local hotel. We have a lot to catch up on. It has been a busy night since our 9 o'clock newscast. We have reporters at both scenes tonight. We'll get to Lee Yang and Anthony Romano in just a moment. But first, the shooting near Spencer Avenue and Worley Street, where police are still looking for suspects. Police were called to the scene around 8.30 tonight. We know there were multiple shots fired in the neighborhood. Witnesses and police tell KOMU 8 News one person was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound to the leg. Officers could not say what condition the victim is when they arrived. I don't have the information on... on um his condition at that time. I can tell you they were concerned that it may have been serious when he entered the hospital, um, but my understanding was they thought he had generally stabilized at this point. Columbia police did reference other active scenes in the city tonight, but told our reporters it's too soon to say if this was connected to any other calls or police activity. We had crews up and down Providence checking out calls, which took KOMU 8's Anthony Romano over to University Hospital, where police told him the ER was locked down. He joins us now at the hospital. Anthony, what's going on out there? Well, I arrived here at the emergency room of University Hospital just over an hour ago. And when we tried to go in, uh, an MUPD officer told us that it was in a lockdown situation and that we could not go inside the emergency room. And we were filming in the parking lot of the emergency room. An MU security guard approached us and told us to leave the property and that he could not give us any information. After that, I witnessed multiple people attempt to drive into the emergency room parking lot but get turned away. I spoke to a woman outside the hospital who said she could not go see her stepson who had just had surgery on the seventh floor because of the lockdown. Now, we still don't know the exact reason for this lockdown situation, but continue to stay with KUMU 8 News as we'll continue to update you when we find out more. For now, reporting live outside University Hospital, Anthony Romano, KUMU 8 News. Also happening right now, an investigation is underway into a death at the Welcome Inn Hotel on North Providence. KOMU 8's Lee Yang joins us live with an update on that investigation. I'm out here in front of the hotel where there's still a little bit of police activity. A witness, Lou Nelson, told me she was here visiting her mom when they called 911. She says her mom's room is right next door to the victims. Melson says a woman frantically told her to call 911, and after she did, she saw the body of a man who was by himself. She says officers said the man was around 40 years old and a longtime resident of Welcome Inn. Like, the man was just laying there with toilet paper in his mouth and with, like, I don't know if it's a gunshot wound or whatnot, but he was just laying there by himself. This is still an active scene with about four to five police cars out here and detectives on the scene as well. We'll give you more updates as we get more information. Reporting live in Columbia, Lee Yang, KOMU 8 News. You know the news after Brandon Ellingson's death in highway patrol custody two and a half years ago, his family sued. They'll receive a $9 million settlement from the state of Missouri. Trooper Anthony Piercy arrested him for intoxicated boating at the Lake of the Ozarks. After handcuffing him, Piercy allegedly put Ellingson's life jacket on incorrectly. Ellingson fell off the boat and drowned. The family's attorney says the lawsuit wasn't about money. It takes vigilant prosecution of a, of a case like this to, to hold people accountable. And that's really what the Ellingsons wanted from the very beginning, is for the state of Missouri to accept responsibility for making the budget decision to merge the water patrol with the highway patrol. A highway patrol spokesman said, quote, the mission of the Missouri State Highway Patrol is to serve and protect all people, and any loss of life is a tragedy. With this case now settled through the court system, the patrol will have no additional comment on this matter. We have been following the events surrounding this drowning since it happened in 2014. Today's settlement was part of one of three court cases to come from the incident. There is still a pending civil case against Trooper Anthony Piercy, who was transporting Allison when he drowned. MSHP suspended Piercy, who also faces involuntary manslaughter charges. A former sergeant also filed a suit against MSHP. Randy Henry says the patrol did not properly investigate Ellingson's death and says the department forced him into retirement. More than 50 people joined in on the first-ever Columbia-Boone County Homelessness Summit today. 
There are about 350 adults without a home in Columbia and more than 200 kids in the school district with no home. Speakers from across the state and country came to the summit to share their ideas. The moderator says the summit opens up an important conversation. We can be aware of the issue and talk about solutions that work, would work here in Columbia uh, best for our community as a whole and how we can work together to make it happen. The summit continues through tomorrow night. As of today, there have been 31 confirmed and 27 probable cases of mumps on MU's campus. The symptoms of mumps are a lot like the flu, fatigue, headache, earaches. The MMR vaccine for mumps is required for students to attend school, but like any vaccine, it's not always 100% effective. Even after two doses of vaccine, um, on average, we get about 88% protection. Um, so you'd still have 12% of the population who's been fully vaccinated that you would expect to get the mumps if they were exposed to it. KOMU 8 spoke with one MU student who had mumps. She wants to remain anonymous but told us the testing takes a while. She went to the Student Health Center last Monday morning and she was sent home, but she didn't get a confirmation phone call about the mumps until Friday. She also told us she was up to date on all of her vaccines and she's not sure how she got the mumps. Well, we had some warmer temperatures out there today, so let's send it over to Kenton to see when it will start to cool down. Brittany, thank you very much. Yeah, we were feeling a look at Friday into the weekend and a look at Thanksgiving week coming up later. Just one week away from Thanksgiving, farmers are thankful it doesn't really feel like the holidays just yet. Mid-Missouri farmers say the unseasonably warm weather has actually helped both warm and cold weather crops. One farmer says he just dug up his tomatoes yesterday. Now that's a crop that's usually lucky to live past October. One Columbia mom took advantage of the warm weather today, picnicking in the park with her kids. She says the healthy harvest is something to be extra thankful for. We always have a great one at our families. We have a great turkey and the ham is what everybody goes for at our family Thanksgiving. So, yes, we're definitely looking forward to it. A livestock farmer says the warm weather is good for his animals as well because there's plenty for them to eat. Missouri's deer hunting season is a prime time to get meat on the table for many families. For meat processors, it's a 10-day madhouse. KOMU8's Lee Yang talked to a Boone County processor about a big increase in customers. This has been a, a record year for us for the opening weekend. Bill Crane, owner of Crane's Meat Processing, says he hasn't been this busy since 2000. Monday we filled up. We, we filled everything, couldn't hardly get the doors closed, and we, we were cutting and cut all we could. But the only way we could to make space, we just had to quit taking them. The Department of Conservation reported that Missouri hunters harvested nearly 100,000 deer during opening season weekend. It's not a record, but it's more than last year. We had really good weather this year, which helped uh, keep the deer up and moving throughout the day or throughout the weekend and also encouraged hunters to get out and spend uh, a lot of time in the field. MDC deer biologist Kevin Wiskirkin says many people don't think deer hunting affects them, but it does. Deer hunting activity generates about a billion dollars annually. Crane says deer hunting also helps feed many Missourians with the state's Share the Harvest program. We'll take in at least 100 head of those before it's all over. At least the deer doesn't go to waste like it used to. Both Crane and Wiskirkin says they expect to see a large harvest this weekend as well. We called six other meat processors. They all said they were too busy to talk to us. After the break, how local businesses are preparing for the busiest shopping day of the year. And a Columbia Park is getting a $100,000 makeover.